Yo, 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 party people! Welcome to Laughter Permitted. I'm Julie Foudy. I'm Lynn Ozawi. And we are still recovering from our 100th episode with the 99ers. Full disclosure, Lynn, I was asleep on the couch by like 8.45 after our happy hour that night. (laughs) I had two drinks and I was like, 99, everyone, I got my blanket, leave me alone. Was it the two drinks or was it just all the excitement or or both? (laughs) The drinks. Was it? (laughs) I'm a lightweight. Uh, So if you haven't listened to it, you should. Mm -hmm. Or if you've already listened to it, go listen again like Lynn, who literally texts me every day with a new one-liner from the pod. Truth. Welcome to your podcast, Jules. (laughs) That would be Mia. That was funny. <laughs> what was I screwing up? The game. <laughs> the game. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Welcome to your podcast, Jules. Mia has the best one-liners. She is funny. Mm-hmm. Uh, and now on to our next round of awesomeness on the pod this week. Our guest is the one and only... Greatest soccer player to ever put on a Canadian jersey, the Christine Sinclair. Yes, it is. In full disclosure, again, we are in full soccer takeover of the pod this season because there's this small thing called a World Cup happening in a few months. So I make no apologies for that. Uh, Christine Sinclair is not only the greatest Canadian soccer player to have played the game, she also has scored more international goals That would be 190, as in 190. She scored more goals than any other player, male or female, in the history of soccer, people, ever. So more than Ronaldo, more than Messi, more than Pele, more than Abby, more than Mia. She actually passed Abby's previously held record of 184 goals in 2020. And Christine is heading into her sixth World Cup. She's played in four Olympics, winning the Olympic gold medal and this last one in Tokyo. And American soccer fans have watched her for years with the Portland Thorns. She's won three league titles with those Thorns. She has, in Canada and globally, uh, really changed the game. And now, in the midst of prepping for her sixth World Cup, Christine and the Canadian women's team are in a big old fight with their Canadian Soccer Federation to bring about some equality and honestly, simple common sense, the way Canada soccer does business. So we will get into all of that. Y'all are in for a treat. So get comfortable listening. It's Christine Sinclair. Kick back. Hi, Christine. Hello. Thanks for doing this. You're so sweet. Oh, no, no problem. And congrats on the um, opening win. Holy cow. Yeah, our team's pretty good. Yeah, 4 0. Yeah, we'll be fine. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. I think you're going to be yeah, just we'll be fine. fine. Um, okay, Christine, the first thing we always do on the podcast is we have the guests set the scene. So, where are you at? What you doing? All that good uh, juice. I'm in house in portland enjoying my day off oh day oh, off nice. day off yes. oh god those are heavenly what did you do sleep in till 1 p.m slept in until my dog woke me up mm. at eight Aww. what kind oh, of dog god. that's late mm. i want to say something better but she's a pomeranian uh, <laughs> No judgment. They're adorable. No dog shaming on Pomeranians. You can judge. You can judge. It's fine. What, and what is what is your dog's name? Her name is Charlie after Aww. Clive Charles. Oh, Clive Charles is. Tell the backstory of Clive Charles. Yeah, Clive oh, Charles uh, was my college coach at the University of Portland. Mm. Um, yeah, kind of grew soccer here in Portland. Um, mm. Played for the Timbers. Uh, passed away when I was a sophomore. 
in college mm. and yeah he just kind of like set the soccer scene here in portland yeah another yeah. great so many players he was a great one yeah. reminds me very much of um when players talk about tony to chico the way they talk about clive charles Aww. yeah yeah it's, it's crazy charlie that's cute yeah my uncle's actually like i knew clive from when i was like a little kid my uncles used to play professionally with him for the timbers so oh no way so that's how you got to university of portland yeah it was like really weird yeah um huh. he knew he... my family my parents actually used to rent an apartment from him and his wife before i was born hmm. in burnaby in canada a small world that is so, crazy. so i was like really never going anywhere else let's be honest <laughs> <laughs> and now you've had, I mean, beyond playing there, you've had, wait, how many years now? 11 years at the Thorns? Is that right? 2013? I think that's what was we're at now. when you were drafted? Yeah. Ooh, yeah. how about that? Yeah, I mean, Changing it was crazy. Your life. Yeah, I mean, when Canadian national team players are going to be, like, allocated, yeah. um, I remember we got to pick where we want, we had to give three cities, and I just... Yeah. Wrote down Portland three times. I was just going to say, <laughs> Portland, Portland, and Portland. No, and they're like, no, you need to give three. I'm like, I did. I did. I gave three. What's wrong with that? I think I did that with San Diego. I was like, San Diego, San Diego, okay. and San Diego. Okay. Thanks very much. I'm not going to play in, like, Chicago or something. Like, yeah, it's no. not happening. Nope. Ain't happening. Do you know who I am? I'm Christine freaking Sinclair. I can write Portland, Portland, Portland. Okay, on that note, before we go anywhere... We need to celebrate you because Why? because you never celebrate yourself. And this is the thing that I was saying to Lynn. I'm like, oh, my gosh, Christine, um, her bio and her what she's done in her career, people don't understand. I mean, we get a lot of listeners on this podcast who aren't soccer people as well. So I wanted some perspective on that. But I mean, when, when you talk about. You've scored more international goals than any human alive that's ever played soccer for their country. So, I mean, damn that, that in itself, 190 goals, Christine. That's men and women more than any Something other like international player. Yeah. Do you have a tattoo of that, by the way? Because I would tattoo absolutely that. not. I would totally tattoo that. You would do tattoo you know, that on your forehead. Julie. I would be like, do I, you know who I am? On my I forehead. have one. Um, bad enough tattoo that oh, has it? a soccer theme, and so no more. <laughs> what is it? Is this top secret? No, it's fine. Uh, it's so embarrassing. Uh, do tell. Um, it was a college mistake, and yeah, we have those. It is a those. like a soccer plane maple leaf. <laughs> Wait, amazing. like the legs coming out of the maple leaf? Oh yeah. <laughs> Does it have arms too? I mean, come on, show me. Where is it? Is it a place no, you can show? No, it's on my back. No. Mm -mm. Oh God! Oh so that God. must exist on the internet and somewhere. Some, and some of like my Thorns teammates that like play for the USC, it they're like, "Are you kidding me? <laughs> like, is that real?" <laughs> like, uh, wasn't is my it, finest decision. Is it in color? Is it like red? Oh, it's of course. <laughs> Size wise, give us a, just a general size wise. I mean, it's it's not that big, like, but like a golf it's ball, big size? enough to bigger like... than your head, bigger than your head. <laughs> no, it's not like it's that. a whole back tattoo. <laughs> no, <laughs> it covers from my neck no. to my bum. <laughs> like oh, that'd be so ball. good. Wait, is like there a, a picture ball. of this that exists on the internet? Uh, God, I hope not. Oh, we're gonna find it because it's gonna go. In it's this, hopefully in this not episode. Ever. No, I appreciate you sharing that. I think at some point we, Julie and I, both owe you something embarrassing because, like, we all, we all have our our thing. So thank you for being yeah. open. It was early. you know. Yeah, it was. Cold. We made a road trip it up happens. to Victoria one day. It happens. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so you have one fabulous tattoo. To my no tattoos, I'm gonna get on that tattoo game. Um, you're about to go play in your sixth Women's World Cup. And mind you, again, some context. Wow. This is a feat that's only been done by two other players. Do you know who they are, Chris Sinclair? Formiga. Yes, Formiga played. Oh, this is Brazilian Like in 10 legend. of them, I think. She played in like 500 World Cups, if there were uh, seven, actually. She played in seven. And the other player? And just based on numbers, I'm going to guess Christine Lilly. Nope. 
then I have no idea. She played for Japan. Sawa. Sawa. Omare Sawa. Yeah. She's awesome. Okay, not bad company. Yeah. So you're about to play in your six. Well, and Marta will. Yeah, Marta. There's a couple others as well. Um, You've played in four Olympics. You just won an Olympic gold medal. I mean, when you, when you maybe take, pause there, Olympic gold medal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Who would have thought, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna. Lie. I'm, just gonna I'm just gonna say congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh God. Um, I don't know if you ever take a moment. I hope you do to stop and go. Holy shit! This is all that I've done. Do you? And when no. you do, what's the overriding emotion? I don't. Come on, I think, you need no, to. No, I honestly, like, I think when I'm done playing, um, I'll look back and be like, okay, that was pretty sweet. Look at the amazing things mm. I've been able to do and see and accomplish. Um, right now, it's like, I don't know, my nieces are the one that ones that celebrate it more. I think my nieces have won wore my medal longer than I have. Um, <laughs> Cause I, I, I'm like still in the grind of it, you know, and enjoying that part. Um, but yeah, I mean, winning gold was pretty special mm, playing for Canada, like just the growth that I've been a part of, uh, you know, when I first joined the national team, I would, we never in a million years would I have thought we'd be on top of a podium. So that was pretty crazy. Yeah. That was a run. But you guys had gotten close, to be fair, right? Like two bronze in the prior Olympics. You finished yeah, third. We, You'd finish yeah, we third did in the World Olympics. Cup as well. Yeah. <laughs> um, but which, is, to, which is hard because the Olympics is only, what, 12 teams? It's a smaller field. It's, it's harder, yeah, I think. It's, it's a lot of games. I don't know. I think, I mean, I don't know. Maybe it's a CONCACAF thing, but we've like nailed the two-day turnaround. You know, mm-hmm. that's because in CONCACAF, that's all we do. Um, mm-hmm. We still haven't mastered the World Cup, so hopefully this summer. You need to take more time and think about all you've done, please. I want you to soak that in. I'll try. Okay. I'll try. We'll, we'll help you here. Okay. We'll, we'll help you here. What all is right. your favorite part of the grind? Because you've been doing the grind for a long time, still doing it. What do you enjoy? It's easy. It's my teammates. Like, the yeah. people I've met. um, and like the the bonds and friendships that will last forever. Um, I think there's a reason why all of us have chosen team sports. Um, yeah. Like I ran cross country growing up, and I used to like make myself so nervous I got sick. Um, so I like you know they like rely on my teammates and try and right. achieve things together. And I've been on the national team for <laughs> quite a long time, and I've grown up with these people that have become my best friends. Mm. Um, that's yeah that's easy that's the most important part of what i've done and yeah the people i've met along the way do you ever think like oh gosh there's one moment i'm most proud of or one memory one thing is that even possible Hmm. you know i'm not gonna lie it it might be the fight i'm in right now with our federation (laughs) Um, yeah. in terms of making a difference and having like a lasting impact on like future generations. So yeah. I'm going to say I'm not quite there yet, but uh, we're getting there. Yeah. Okay. Perfect segue. Thank you for that. Oh dear. Um, because <laughs> I, I'm not going to lie. I don't understand what the hell they were thinking. Uh, Canada soccer. Um, because Fair. Fair. <laughs> I was like, but your team just won an Olympic gold medal. Your men's team is crushing it. Like, how do you sign a deal? Again, I'm going to give some background, or you're going to give some background on this, but how do you sign a deal as the Canadian Soccer Federation with Canadian, what is it called? Soccer business? Soccer business, yeah. Yeah, Canadian soccer business that essentially says, okay, 
Canadian soccer business, no matter how much you make off of these sponsorship, TV rights, media deals, you're we're still only going to take a flat fee. I heard it was like $3 million a year, which is crazy to me that they they didn't ever yeah. say or put language in the contract that if there is an upside and this team wins Olympic gold medal or the men's team crushes it, which both of you have, then we will... St- you know, we'll, we'll still get three million plus a percentage of the upside. There's no sharing of the upside. How is that possible that a deal like that gets done? Well, you should have negotiated the deal. I uh, don't even have a business <laughs> degree, and I'm like, what the hell happened? Um, surface like short story is Canada obviously wanted to be part of the joint bid for the men's World Cup. Yeah. In order to host a men's World Cup. You have to have a men's professional league. Uh, And this Canada soccer business promised a men's professional league. Um, So that's why they did it. Uh, I don't have an explanation as to why it's a 20-year deal. Um, 20? Yeah. Uh, With that flat fee? It, it like, increases incrementally. Like, like little bits. By teeny bits. But no percentage Um, of, like, upside. No. No. So that's like, that's ultimately why they did it. They bet against the success of their national teams in exchange for a World Cup is how us players read it. Mm. Okay, so where are you at? Because, again, so what happened in February was the She Believes Cup, which is the big tournament in the United States that was happening between... Uh, the United States, Canada, Brazil, and Japan. And uh, you all, before the tournament started, said, we're not going to play in protest of what's happening, right? Yep, yep. And Canada Soccer then said, mm, well... We're going to sue you. <laughs> yeah, we're going to sue <laughs> well, you. Well, they threatened to, yeah. Um, and so obviously us as players, like, individually, we're like, we can't afford to be sued for all the lost revenue that U.S. soccer was going to have if we didn't participate in the She Believes. Um, So we went back to work on a protest and we are right now. So what happens in Canada is you need to give like, it's like 18 days. Mm -hmm. So uh, of notice to be in a legal strike position, but we knew in the She Believes, you're not gonna have a bigger platform than that tournament before the World Cup. so we're now in a legal position to strike. We have mm-hmm. a FIFA window coming up in yeah. 10 days. Who are you supposed to play um, again? We are going to France. Oh, you're going to France. Okay. Yes. Which is a great game, which you guys would want to play. Uh, so, yeah. And I mean, yeah. it's the second to last FIFA window before the World Cup. Yeah. But at this point, unfortunately, the CSA has not um, met, has not even met. They haven't even addressed things with us. It's just been like crickets. Um, I think it's important for people to know that our demands, I'm going to call them, it goes so much. It goes so much deeper than equal pay. Equal pay for our federation is actually easy. They signed on that very early on. Um, So that those aren't the issues at play right now. Um, It's, it's funding for our programs, youth programming, staffing, um, mm-hmm. equal, like, yeah, we have equal pay, but by the way, you're not having the last two camps of the year. So it's equal pay, but not equal opportunity to make that money. Mm-hmm. Um, so, mm-hmm. yeah, those unfortunately have not been addressed, and we'll see what happens in the next 10 days. I mean, you, part, the, your, your version of our Congress, your parliament got involved as well like you were testifying before parliament a couple we did, weeks yes. ago yeah four of us went there and then the csa went about a week after we did that's canadian soccer association their federation oh, yeah so yeah. it's their u.s soccer federation especially yeah. csa okay so, so and the, and it's been crickets ever since uh pretty much uh we have a call later today uh our first interaction with the new president of Canadian Soccer Association tonight. So we'll see how that goes. Who is a woman? Yeah, Charmaine Crooks. And she is the interim president? Yes. And what happened to Mick, Nick Bontis, who uh, was the former president that signed all this? Um, as they tend to do, he failed upwards. and yeah. To CONCACAF, I heard. To CONCACAF, yeah. Yeah, he's now working for CONCACAF. Failed upwards. 
Uh, yeah, you like that? <laughs> so perfectly put. And so we can really spell this out for our listeners. What are some of the basic things then that your you and your teammates are asking for from your federation? Um, I think short term is equal preparation opportunities that the men got. Um, our federation is it's a smaller it is smaller. You know, our men have if that was our first World Cup in 36 years, like we're not demanding and asking for the world here. We just are asking for the same that the men got when they were preparing for their World Cup, whether that's travel standards, um, like I said, staffing, like things as simple as like gear, um, all the way down to youth programming. I mean, we have, I think we have one youth camp this year for, because Bev has had to use the budget to fund mm-hmm. our World Cup prep. Um, so it, it's the future of our national team, which we are all very, very concerned about. Mm-hmm. Julie, how familiar does all of this oh sound God. and even I, feel I know. to you, like feel to you? <laughs> yeah, and you know are you having deja vu? Is, <laughs> oh, I get PTSD when when yeah. when actually when when Canada soccer when you guys threatened to boycott those February she believes cup games in Canada soccer. I saw the response on Twitter was basically like, "We're going to sue your asses if you do." It's like, oh my God, it's all the same. It's all the same. This is exactly the response we got back in the day. It's like you were saying in Parliament when you said, you know, Nick Bontis, the president, was like, what was Christine Sinclair bitching about? Uh, you know, uh, what yeah. was it again that she was bitching about? I was like, it's... Oh. It's, it's a this, joke. It's, it, it's Yeah, and, and again, it's not... It's not like, hey, we want millions of dollars. You're just asking for, hey, can we just prepare? We just want an Olympic gold medal. Can we Can we have some training camps? Can we have staff? They've cut the staff way back. They've yep. cut your day's training way back. Like, if you want us to be successful, then allow us to be successful. We're not asking for millions. And that's the thing I think that gets lost in all of it when people come at, you know, the women for, oh, how dare you demand equal pay? It's like... That's such a small portion of it. The other portion of it is in just investing in the program Absolutely. and in, in the youth as well. So, and I applaud you guys for fighting for that because that was our, that was actually our in when we went to the board, we were like, this isn't about lining our pockets. Like this is about what are you spending on a 12 year old girl versus a 12 year old boy? Cause right now exactly. it's about 80, 20. Yeah. Hmm. And I mean, wow. in, in Canada, like there's no professional environment for girls, women to play in. And yet our federation is, you know, funding the Canadian Premier League off the backs of like their right. national team successes. Wow. Um, right. Because that's the see... group that collects the money, right? Exactly. From your deals, from your national team And so once deals. again, it's similar to our it song goes back to in the day. Yeah. Men or yeah. boys to develop them. Yet none of that goes. Yeah. It's a, it's a disaster. <laughs> What is it like for you then seeing the progress that the United States, the U.S. soccer has made or the the um, U.S. women's national team has made while you're in the yeah. midst of just asking for some basic things? Yeah, I mean, obviously, the, U, the U.S. players, like, all along have been at the forefront of this and were the first ones to to make that stand and to take that approach and – Obviously, being the northern neighbors, we were always like, that's what, and that's what we need to fight for. And what happened with us is that our men's team finally became successful. So, like, for a long time, we were treated equally to our men, you know, um, equally poorly, but at least it was equal. That's what we've always said. Like, (laughs) wow. (laughs) But then our men qualify for their first world cup in 36 years and they are given the world. Um, Hmm. and we're like, Hey, wait a second. Um, but obviously I'm teammates with Becky and bouncing ideas off of her. And then in preparation for the, the, she believes, Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it it was fitting that we played the U S first and Mm -hmm. we were able to make a stand together. And yeah, that was cool. um, That moment actually. Yeah. I mean, being, bitter rivals on the field, but off the field. Yeah. I mean, we're all teammates, we're all friends and we're fighting for the same things. It's bigger they took than a, they took a, a, a moment of silence before the game and took a picture together. And, uh, the, the, you guys wore your purple shirts that yeah. said enough is enough purple being for gender equality. And then the U S team wore 
purple wristbands with you guys, right? In, yes, in yeah. solidarity. And the Yeah, other cool thing is it is it went global. Like England did the same thing. Japan did the same thing. I, th I was like, yes. yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it's crazy that, unfortunately, not just women's footballers, but at some point we all have to, like, face this fight um, to make a change. And it's our turn right now, and the support from around the world has been overwhelming. Um, that we're truly doing this together, that, yeah, we're fighting for each other. I'm interested in both of your perspectives on this in that so many female athletes essentially have two jobs. One is to be an athlete, be the best on the field, win championships, and the other is off the field where you have to stand up for yourself. You have to fight. And I'm wondering what that is like. <laughs> Tiring? That's the first word that came to my mind. <laughs> like, exhausting. Exhausting. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, being in the thick of it and being a player rep for our national team and going through the She Believes um like you think you can do it all and you hope you can do it all um but unfortunately for us we went on the field in the she believes and you could just tell like we didn't want to be there and mm. we didn't want to of course you want to compete of course you want to win and prepare for a world cup but like when you don't feel supported by your own federation it's just kind of mm -hmm. flat um mm -hmm. and that's unfortunately how a lot of us felt in the she believes like and heading into World Cup, that's definitely not how you want to feel. Um, you want to feel supported by your federation, by your country. Um, we're not quite there yet. That being said, um, it's probably my most important fight I'll have, and I'm determined to stick it through and get to the other side of it so that my nieces, who are 8 and 12, don't have to do this, um, mm -hmm. that it's better for them and better for future generations. So yeah. Here, here. Here's here's to a a generation of female athletes that doesn't have to fight. That can just right? play. <laughs> they can I just mean, focus on that. They'll be fighting for other things. I mean, yeah. I think we're that's how we're all built. Um, but hopefully it's not to be treated equally to men. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot. It's a lot. And that's I think the thing that gets also lost in it is like the French national team obviously had a, a big fight with their federation recently. They had three huge players say, no more, we're not doing this until you get rid of the coach. And the, the French federation, I thought is similar to the Spanish federation, which is going through something similar. They write these notes in their, in their little press releases. I don't know if you saw this, Christine, but the Spanish federation was basically like, we demand an apology from these women. Yeah. And how dare you send a letter saying you're not going to play. And the French federation was like, and this will never happen again. Again, the way these women behaved and I thought would they ever do that with a men's national team slap them on uh, the wrist like that no I'm no. like and these women do not want to do this they don't want to miss games you don't want to not go to France and play in one of your only FIFA windows it's like um yeah if you actually took care of it we wouldn't have to do this you dummies right? so it's... stop telling us where this behavior is not okay actually your behavior is the one that sucks that was the conversation we used to have all the time <laughs> well i mean we're just bitching so it's <laughs> yeah what are you bitching about now <laughs> what, was, what was christine sinclair bitching about again oh, oh god Oh, uh, God. All right. What 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 is the end goal in all of this, and when is it going to get done? Please tell me it's going to get done before the World Cup, and you're in the World Cup. I mean, it has to. I mean, at, like at the very least, I don't know if we will solve the world's problems before the World Cup, but yeah, we will get to a place where us as players feel confident and comfortable that we're making progress and moving forward, and certain things at least have been sorted out signed um yeah it has there's no way it can't i'm telling myself that <laughs> no. throwing it out into the world yeah say it out loud and good vibes <laughs> <laughs> oh well 
I commend you for having the courage to take this leap and do it. So, and as you said, there's a world be a world of people behind you that are cheering you on in your village, in your dope village. <laughs> so keep at it. Oh, we are. Oh, we will. Yep. Keep at it, my friend. Thanks for all you're doing. So I'm excited for what's next. It is the Lynn game. And I feel like Julie is meeting her match from a competitive element. I've, I've heard a rumor, Christine, that you are a bit competitive. Would that apply to, to just silly trivia games? Okay, here's the thing with me. I'm either like super competitive or like the most laid back, easy going. Like there's no in between. So <laughs> it's, it's, what do you it's think will come out zero. now? I'm not sure. It depends what we're... <laughs> I love it. I don't really know. Tell me what the game is. Yeah, like, what are we doing here? Uh, I'm just going to say that I am always on. There is no off switch. And here is my noisemaker. What the heck is that? It's a red British phone booth with coins in it. It's the only thing I had on my desk That's at your the time. Maker? Swaggy, my okay. dog, my damn dog, has eaten all oh the, the, the squeaky toys to pieces. So I gotta go. I gotta go run to the pet store and get some more squeakies. Well, my dog my doesn't maker. have teeth left, so <laughs> that's what I needed. <laughs> Toothless dog. <laughs> so, what do you call a bear with no teeth, Christine? A gummy bear. A gummy bear. <laughs> <laughs> We've officially peaked on this podcast. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I come in there. That's bad. What do you call a one-eyed deer? No idea. No idea. Oh God. Oh, oh God. Bad joke time with Christine. That's bad. There. That's bad. All right. What we got, Lynn? But now that we're kind of in the noisemaker phase, what is st- what is yours? What have you got for us, Christine, for your for your noisemaker? Uh, this is my dog's fox. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, yeah, that just doesn't that just ring old really? school laughter yeah. permitted? That it's, squeak, that noise. Oh gee. I mean, it's OG. better it than feels, a yeah. telephone if, booth. That's for sure. <laughs> what does Charlie do when you do that? Where is Charlie? <laughs> Does no, he go crazy she does, for that? She doesn't play. Oh, she. Okay. Charlie. It's in a very yeah, so She's probably right sleeping right in a bed somewhere. <laughs> she doesn't play. She's <laughs> she's the toothless playlist dog. <laughs> she's a princess. Oh, <laughs> Charlie. Here is the game. Uh, it's best of five trivia questions. Oh, God. They are all multiple choice. You can squeak in whenever you think you know the answer. And every game has a theme. Julie never knows what the theme is. So okay. truly, level, I don't cheat. level playing field there. I'm very honest. I'm not a cheater. Today's game, I don't know why. I kind of just was feeling all about the 2000s. So all of the questions are oh, about the 2000s, God. pop culture stuff. Okay. Oh, my just... God, not my forte. Yeah, mine either. Oh. And Lynn knows this, so she does it every time. Not like, oh, hey, 2000s sports God, questions. Pop destroyed culture. in this. Actually, I wouldn't okay. be able to do sports questions either. I do yeah, need let's do, to let's give... do sports questions. I, I could, <laughs> I, I'd back myself on sports questions. So this, I'm having a flashback to um, Kendall Coyne Schof- Schofield, who's women's hockey player, who um, was on our podcast with Megan Duggan. And I think all the questions were about music and Kendall was just like, I'm out. I got nothing. Can this be about sports? <laughs> we had her back on the podcast and I did do a sports game. So that's an invitation if you want to come okay. back and we can do okay. specific sports, that's maybe even Canadian sports. I mean, no. hockey. hockey. Let's yeah. go. No, okay. no. So no hockey questions in this one. I do Celine need... Dion? <laughs> Celine Dion. Okay. My name is Celine Dion. <laughs> I am the greatest singer of all time. In the world. <laughs> Okay. Full disclosure, I was this close to putting in an Avril Lavigne question, but I was like, there's no way Julie's going to get it. So I was just like, I, I actually... wouldn't get it either. So. <laughs> okay. oh, so I do need to give credit to this website I came across, watercoolertrivia.com, where have you been all my life? Because they had some really good questions and I, I just oh, straight up kind of Now you're went. teaching people how to pre-cheat your game. Yeah, so, I know where okay. to study. Here okay. we go. Um, best of five wins. Okay. 
question look one. At, I think I think her competitive juices are on. Look at her right now. No, I'm pr- I'm praying. <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> I need a little bit. Yeah. Okay, let's go. In 2004, what popular ABC TV show <laughs> began with the character <laughs> Jack? Opening his eyes on a mysterious beach amidst a plane crash. Was it A, lost, B, found, or C, yellow jackets? I've never seen any three of these. So, (laughs) Um. Christine. I'm going to go with lost. Correct. Oh, come on! Why does this happen to me all the time? It's called found. And yellow, yellow jackets, jackets is like current now. Yeah. Yes. So I was like, so you knew yellow jackets. That's the soccer one, right? With the soccer team. I, I've never yeah. watched it. Yeah, it is actually. I saw it's, it's, it's kind of yeah. creepy. It was good, but I couldn't get through it because it was too scary. I don't like scary. Okay. Question two. Right. What 2002 film tells the story of a young woman of Indian descent who defies her parents' wishes to play on the London soccer team? Is it, is it A? Oh, sports question. Oh, Christine. Bend it like Beckham. Correct. Whatever A, B, C that is. It was B. <laughs> <laughs> was she Indian? Yeah. I've seen that movie. I have too. But I was like, I don't remember her being Indian. <laughs> I guess it's been a long time. <laughs> I so it was a while ago. I so suck at this. It's not even funny. You're doing great. Okay, I am zooming yeah, in. I mean, in. I'm I'm squeaking in on this next one, and this is where I get into trouble. Premature squeaks. If you get this one, I could get smoked on this. And you just said you suck at trivia, pop culture. Question three. In 2002, what future superstar won the inaugural season of American Idol? Was it A, Christine? Whatever Kelly Clarkson is. Correct. (sighs) She was A. Oh, thank you. Uh, Okay, okay. Funny story. (laughs) Okay, great. You just went three and I just heard this question like yesterday. Oh, see, they were using the same water cooler and website. I started singing like the, the song that <sighs> she sang. I was in college. I remember sitting in my dorm room, <sighs> my roommate and I watching the f- season finale. And yeah. she a what was for? Like what was the question? <laughs> yeah. First of all, was... congratulations, Christine Sinclair. You can add this to your list of accomplishments that we will celebrate. It's going right at the top, top I think. Top of the bio. Yep. Okay, Crush what was for? Julie Foudy. I need to get one. Four. What? I'm sorry. The American version of the show, The Office, premiered on NBC in 2005. Which Pennsylvania city does the show take place? Oh, God. (laughs) Have you seen the show, at least, Julie? Yeah, I have. Steve Colbert, right? Wasn't Steve? (laughs) So close. Steve Carell. Carell. Steve Carell. Steve Carell. You're right there. Colbert's hilarious, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, A, Pittsburgh, B, Scranton, or C, Philadelphia? Scranton. Correct. Ah, I didn't know that. Okay, go. Let's make it three, two. Last one's a real throwback. Question five. What 2003 Beyonce single was named the greatest pop song of the 2000s by VH1? Beyonce single. Um, all, the single cra- all the single ladies. Is A, crazy. I may have asked this one before. No, I'm, I'm, now that I think about it. Uh, a, a, crazy in love. B, single ladies. Or C, halo. All the single ladies. Incorrect. Oh. Christine? Uh, for the steal? A? Correct. <laughs> Four to one. That God, was against. I, I had a 50 50 chance. <laughs> I got so smoked. Uh, <laughs> okay, let's move on. Most you know the thing is, questions. I don't even think Christine really tried that she hard didn't either. Go into her competitive mode. She was like, no, oh, she didn't my need to. Gosh, she didn't I was need like to. a late, late she back. She was like, win. laid back. This is so easy. Julie stinks at this. Okay, most. I'm pretty laid back person. Yeah, I really yeah, am. I know you are all the time, except when you get between those white lines. Um, all right, most pressing questions. Oh God, can you say something with a pronounced Canadian accent that will make us laugh? No. <laughs> nope. <laughs> um, that was really good. I laugh. Come on, eh? See, no, but. Here's the thing. So from the West Coast, we don't usually say A, because I know oh. that's what everyone thinks Canadians oh, eh? say. Eh? But 
No, I go home now and my family are like, you sound American. So mm-hmm. I think I've lost everything. Mm. Yeah. You know, it's just. I'm on a boat. I'm on a boat. I'm on a boat. I'm on a boat. I'll just do my best. Yeah, sound there, you sound great. <laughs> do I? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, you wrote a book. Congratulations. Oh, God. Yes, I did. You did. Playing the Long Game, a memoir. It's just a book, a memoir. Uh, welcome. That, that's a welcome to the VIA Club. Do you know what the VIA Club is? No. It means you're a very important author. Oh, well, I'm not important, but thank you. <laughs> uh, you've, you've always been so private. So what inspired you to write the book? Uh, um, so the opportunity like came up after winning gold and um, I think like me growing up, I would have said no every single day of my life. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm trying to like step outside my comfort zone at times. Mm. Um, and honestly, I'm sick of just seeing like sports, male, like autobiographies or whatever you want to call them in the shelves. And I just had to go for it. Hell and yeah. Yes. One of my, like I've said, one of my greatest responsibilities, I think, is for the next generation and anything I can do to help inspire them, help show them that anything's possible, um, I'm going to do. And it was painful uh, because I hate talking about myself, I, um, but I did it with a lot of help and... Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's pretty cool to see, like, to walk into, like, Powell's in Portland and see that on the shelves. I'm like, that's weird. <laughs> that's but, awesome is what it is. Yeah, well, yeah, and then my family pointed out, <clears throat> they're like, well, on page six, there's a spelling mistake. I'm like, I quit. I can't, <laughs> I can't like, that's not, Thanks, I'm family. not an English major. Sorry. <laughs> Your brother's like, you did not mention me enough. In this oh. book. <sighs> no, he, yeah, my brother was like, you cannot put anything embarrassing in there about me. So, I think I was kind. Oh, well, it's not easy to write a book. So, congratulations on no, that one. It was more like therapy. Was it? So, yes. Especially Aww. like. Um, How so? Well, like going through like. I mean, being on Canada's national team hasn't always been easy and like winning games hasn't always been our forte. Um, And so just revisiting tournaments, uh, revisiting like moments in my life that haven't been the most positive or great. um, Yeah, it's hard to dive into those. But that being said, I think it's also important for people to know that as athletes, I think the outside world just sees you standing on a podium or playing in Portland in front of 15,000 fans. And there is a lot of sacrifice. There is a lot of heartbreak and missing out on things, um, moving away from your family. Uh, it, it It isn't all the like glory. There is a lot that yeah goes underneath that yeah and it's good for them to to see it and read it and or hear it in the audio version and all of that so good for you for stepping out of that comfort zone christine sinclair oh yeah and i uh, a kid's book is coming so you know i gotta get the kids in there too so you're gonna have like a full-on seven part series next year absolutely not no no (laughs) a reality tv show (laughs) let's go no no, nope. let's go, Sinclair. That's way too far outside of my comfort. <laughs> That's not happening. Bachelorette with Christine Sinclair. No, absolutely not. No, no. Okay. No. High, try, low, though. cheer. This is the final thing we do on our podcast: the high of your career, the low of your career, and the cheer is for someone who's helped you along the way that you're grateful for. Whew. Oh man, that this is hard. Low of my career is easy. I'd say finishing dead last in a World Cup for mm-hmm. Canada. What year was that? 
2011 in Germany. Mm. And I think heading into it, we were ranked like number five in the world. And mm. with it was the first time with like expectations. Um, mm-hmm. But that whole experience, I would say, would be the low of my career. Like with Carolina Marace, she moved our team to Rome. It was just weird. Um, so that <laughs> uh, those like six months were the low. Um, high of my career. Oh gosh, I think it would be easy to say winning gold, but I'm not going to say that because that's yeah. lame. <laughs> Um, we'll give you two. You can say that one. No, I'm going to say the high of my career has been like the journey of it and being a part, being very fortunate to be a part of this game for so long. Um, and being a part of the growth of the game Mm. and the development of it from like 2000 when like being in Canada, no one cared what we did or how we did. Um, to now seeing how big this game has gotten on a global scale Um, and to have seen the whole journey is I'll say that's my, that's my high. That's a good one. Um, Cheer. I, I I mean, they're not here anymore, but I'm going to say my parents, Mm. like they, yeah, supported me were like introduced me to sport in the like, kindest way never felt any pressure from them just support um and then my mom yeah just being my inspiration so i'm gonna say my parents Mm. i'm cheesy like that so that's good yeah (laughs) i want every parent out there to hear that just supported me in every way possible never any pressure the kindest way yeah like let's get done with a game and like I remember she'd always ask, like, did you have fun? Like, you know what I mean? Like, that yeah. was it. And, and, and then we'd dive in. But, like, I knew it was from a place of, like, they just wanted my brother and I'd be happy. Mm-hmm. Gosh. As well, long as we played sports, we had to play sports. As long as you <laughs> stayed in it, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's the most important thing. Just, you'll play. That's what I always say. They're like, do your yeah. kids play soccer? I'm like, they have no choice. Yeah. <laughs> no, I say yeah, they'll play a sport. It doesn't have to be soccer, but you will play something. And I prefer team sports, please. Yes. Uh, you learn so much through team sports. That's why I love your high so much. Mm. The journey. It wasn't one moment. People always say that, like, what was the one moment? Like, I asked you. I can't believe I asked you that because I hate when people ask me that. What was the one moment? And then I went and asked you that. Ah, sorry. No, it's, and uh, it's... I, I go, I always say, I... I miss like those gals you're surrounded with every day. I mean, that's, that's the hard thing that you, you know, when you're around these awesome women in your life all the time that are just passing on gift after gift. The great thing is you can still be around them forever. You're just not on a daily basis. So. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, I mean, the people hundred percent is the people along the way that it's most important. Well, I do hope, when you stop playing, you'll take a moment to recognize what you've done for this game, not just for Canada, right? It's, I will. And, it's and I beat you in trivia, so <laughs> I will stop and think about that as well. <laughs> Without even having to go into her competitive mode. She was no. like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> she didn't even wait for the the, the multiple no. choice either. Didn't she even just, need to. She didn't even need it. She's like, oh, it was terrible the most casual squeak in too. It's like, yeah. Mm. She's like, I'm terrible at this. No, I don't need multiple choice. Beep. <laughs> Kelly Clarkson. Beep. What was the other one? <laughs> God. Yeah. <laughs> it was like the Jackie Joyner cursey. She smoked me so bad, Christine. I didn't even get a squeak the entire time. Did not rattle <laughs> once. I was like, what the F just happened? <laughs> this this is what happens when you don't play anymore. You need some competitive outlet. This is it for me. You should, yeah, you should practice. Yeah, I should. <laughs> I'm going to go to that watercooler.com and yep, just there like, you go. start looking up all every <laughs> trivia question. Scour it. Okay, maybe she's going to go to the 70s. Maybe. <laughs> Oh no. oh no! Oh my gosh! Well, my friend, thank you for taking the time. Awesome! Thanks for having me. Yeah. Ah, Canadians 
are so nice. <laughs> except in except in the Lynn game. <laughs> Have you noticed that though, Lynn? They're so nice. I disagree. They really are. I think that was the most polite win by any guest we've ever had. True. But you do agree that they're so nice. You don't disagree with that. You're saying you disagree with that except the game. Oh yeah. Yeah. That actually it did apply yeah. to the game. No, I that was I, yeah. I that was the word I would use is lovely. It was a lovely yeah. interview. And I don't think I've ever met a person who did not love Christine Sinclair. Hmm. It says a lot. Yeah. Everyone, because she's so humble and so grounded and so salt of the earth. Yeah. And with all the accolades, very similar to Mia, mm-hmm. with all the accolades, it's never about her. Mm-hmm. which is why it was so hard for her to write that book, which she talked about. Mm-hmm. And th- that's the thing. Oh, I just, you, sh- you have to wrap your arms around those people. I cherish them because she's grown the game as Mia did. She's grown the game in Canada um, like no other player has. I mean, she is the the Canadian player, the greatest player, male or female, in history of Canada to mm-hmm. put on a jersey. Mm-hmm. So... And now we know she has a maple leaf with legs and arms <laughs> on her back. Thank you for that, Christine. <laughs> oh my gosh, that was funny. Yeah, my uh, takeaway, I, it's, it's, I love how you brought up in the, the intro of the 99ers, but I got such 99ers vibes from her. Mm. As far as mm-hmm. her favorite part of the journey are her teammates the hum- mm-hmm. humbleness, very much uh, a parallel to how Mia approached mm-hmm. approached things. Yeah. She would have fit in well. Mm-hmm. We would have taken her. <laughs> we might have taken her. <laughs> okay, you can come play with us. <laughs> uh, I hope they do well with that fight. They will. Yeah. I love that they're putting it all out there. Okay. Questions permitted. Yeah, you know, we're just going to stick on the theme of, of 99ers because we did get so many good questions. I, I, I went back and looked, and one that I w- I'm going to ask you comes from a pal of ours from ESPN, Michelle Bashaw. And it actually kind of relates to just the whole conversation about federations and how basic support isn't a given for women, unfortunately. And so Michelle's question was, on the road, what crazy things did you eat? How did you get creative with your budget? Because I would imagine early days per diem might not have been very much. Well, it helped that Dunkin' Donuts was my sponsor. <laughs> and I know I've told this a million times on the pod, but they used to give us those free um, coupons. Like there were actual paper coupons. There was no electronic anything on your phone. You didn't scan anything. It was an actual stack of coupons that you'd go in and it'd say like, you get a free dozen, you get free six donuts, you get a free coffee. And each one was different. And we'd Mm -hmm. walk in with all our coupons, the entire team. I'd hand them out and we'd literally stop the bus and be like, Dunkin' Donuts! And we'd walk in and the owners would get so mad because they had to then request money back from yeah. corporate or <laughs> clean them out that day. <laughs> ah, so good. Um, yeah, no, I, who was I just telling the other day that literally the last straw for us in our negotiation was we had to pay for our bagels after practice. <laughs> who was I just telling that to? One of the. Na- oh, it was it Naomi Gurma? Yeah, yeah Naomi Gurma. She was saying, or before we started recording, she was saying what she, because I was asked to test the audio. I often ask people, oh, right. what did you have for breakfast? And I asked her what she had for lunch because we were testing different different um, audio possibilities. And that, when you heard what she had for lunch, you That got, was provided by the San Diego Wave. I was yeah. like, wait, what? We couldn't even get the national team to do any of that yeah, back we in the day. S- we had to buy our own damn bagels. You had to take up a fight. collection. <laughs> yeah, we'd take a collection. That was it. We were like, we're no, no more collections. <laughs> yeah, I think in Anyways, asking this may- to, to you, that was kind of the point, is that something as simple as food, you really you ha- had to get creative with. Mm, we didn't eat very well either. There was no nutritional specialist. Mm. There was no protein shakes like they get now after <laughs> games, which is fabulous. Mm-hmm. I would love that stuff. So, uh, And honestly, you know me. Give me a donut and give me a beer, and I'm very happy. I, I honestly, I could have used it. I really could have. 
I might have been something. Well, y'all did, yeah, y'all did Maybe. Pr- pretty well on your donuts and <laughs> and uh, American cheese slices. No, didn't want those. How many years? I just want some cheddar. <laughs> Thank you, Dope Village, for spending your time with us again this week. So go on, go on, rate and subscribe the podcast if you would, and while you're there. Go on and leave a comment on our Apple podcast page, especially if it's a good one. We love those. It really does make a difference, so we appreciate you taking the time. And be sure to spread the good word about our pod. Maybe we will pick up some nice Canadian listeners, eh? (laughs) Eh? Eh? I don't think I'm doing it. Eh? (laughs) Laughter permitted world takeover has officially launched when we get the canadians on board (laughs) thank you as always to ally and dick sporting goods for their fabulous support and of course to kate diaz for our theme music and remember as always kids sing it with us laughter Laughter permitted it is a like a soccer plane maple leaf